In this video, I'm going to go through the solution to question 5 in part A of the 2015 examination paper for FINC 19014, Property Investment and Finance. This question has to do with what are fairly complex calculations related to loans, particularly credit, credit foncia loans or principal and interest repayment loans. The mathematics with these is basically annuity calculations, but there are a couple of tiny wrinkles, especially when you're doing calculations mid-term. That means um, during the period when the mortgage is running, not at the very beginning. We'll get to that shortly. Let's look at the question. Mabel also has purchased her own home on which she has a credit foncia mortgage at the same interest rate as her investment loan, but with a 25-year term and a principal of 200000 which we took out exactly one year ago. She pays the mortgage off using the standard repayment. Now you see normally they are repaid on a monthly um, basis. She is unsure whether to use $15,000 of her own funds to add to the equity for the investment property or to pay off against her home loan. What savings will she make to her home loan by using the money to pay down the principal today? Now, if we look at the question, first thing we have to do is we don't have to decide whether it's better to pay it into the investment or into the home loan. We simply have to work out what savings she's going to make off her 25 year credit foncia loan if she puts the $15,000 towards it. Generally, as we've covered in class, it's better to have minimum personal debt and maximum business or investment debt. And so the question as to where to put the $15,000, unless there's some other reason, such as the interest rates being radically different, um, because there is a tax deduction against interest charges on the investment property, normally it's better to use any equity to pay down your personal debt as far as possible while leaving your business debt, your investment debt, uh, you know, to take up the rest. And so we're not really worried about that particular question. We're assuming that any dollars she has left over, she'll put against her home mortgage until she pays that down completely and uh, then she might think about paying down her investment debt or there's other strategies in there. Okay, so what we're doing is looking at the effect of a lump sum payment against a credit foncia loan. Now this goes back to the module where we looked at uh, interest rates and um, debt strategies and if you had in your exam the uh, mortgage calculator uh, that we built in class, this would be an absolute breeze, but we're going to have to do it on a financial calculator. So we're going to have to go through it step by step. Okay, let's do that now. First thing we're going to be looking at is that the data, most of the data we have is um, uh, what we have here, full term of 25 years, $200,000 principal, interest rate of 6%, and years elapsed is one. Because credit foncia loans are repaid monthly, very seldom are they repaid annually, we're going to convert those figures to their equivalent monthly values. So we simply multiply the term by 12, so 25 becomes 300, and we're going to divide the interest rate by 12, 6% uh, becomes half a percent, so it's half a percent per month, equals 6% annually. Likewise, we're going to convert the years elapsed from one year, multiply that by 12, and that gives us 12 payments into the mortgage, into the loan. Now, the trick, the master trick when you're dealing with mortgage calculations in credit fonts, your loans mid-term, is that you have to always work in terms of the remaining term. No point in being concerned about what the starting position was because the um, calculations are really simply looking at the remainder of the term. The first 
figure that we need to work out is the monthly mortgage payment. We do that by entering the data that we know, the 300 payments or an N number of payments of 300, the principal, which is the PV of 200, and the interest rate or I of 0.5. We load those into the three of the five financial calculation buttons on your financial calculator. Unfortunately, I seem to have misplaced my financial calculator, and so I'm not able to demonstrate it um, in front of you. Um, so I'm going to have to rely on Excel in this case for this video. But as long as you use those five buttons, you'll be able to work out and solve for the PMT, the payment, in this case the mortgage payment, which should come out as $1,288.60. Go right to the cent here because you want to avoid errors rolling up as we go through these calculations. Okay, once we have the mortgage repayment, we know that into the future we're going to be paying that each month. So now we can work out the current principal. And we work that out by working out the principal on the basis of the payment that we know, the remaining term that we can calculate by taking 12 from 300, and also the interest rate. So now we clear the financial registers, we load in the mortgage payment of 1288.60, we put an N value of 288 now, the interest rate of 0.5%, and we solve now for the PV, the current principal, and that should return 196 439.92. Now that may come out as a negative depending on whether you put in the mortgage payment uh, as positive or negative. You disregard the sign, it's a convention that the calculator will use. Uh, you just need to be sort of on the ball enough to uh, ignore the negatives or use them in the correct sense. One way or another, we're simply looking at the absolute value of uh, 196.439.92. From the remaining term and the current principal, we're able to work out the total payment that's going to be made between today and the end of the loan. That's simply a matter of multiplying 288 by 196.439.92, and that will give you 371.117.61. That's the total number of dollars that you're still to pay on the loan if you repay it in the normal way. However, we want to investigate what happens when we pay off a lump sum today. If we repay $15,000 against our mortgage today, it will bring the current principal down from 196.439. By subtracting $15,000 from that, it gives us a new current principal of 181.439.92. Okay, now we're going to work out the number of payments remaining. We do that by entering the new current principal as the PV. 181.439.92, the mortgage payment as the PMT amount, I'd recommend you put that in in the negative, you can think of it as cash going out of your pocket so it's negative, and finally the third piece of information you put into your calculator, into the I button, is the interest rate of 0.5%. And then you're going to solve for the N, the number of payments remaining. And that should return a number of 244.0995, etc. From that, we can work out the total repayment under the new regime. Again, that's simply the number of payments remaining 
uh, of 244.099, etc., multiplied by the mortgage payment, which remains as 1288.60. And that should give us a total repayment now of $314,000. $547.39. At this point, we have everything we need to do some simple subtractions to give us the savings. The savings is worked out by taking the total repayment in the original loan, the standard loan. You subtract from that the $15,000 which you've paid out, and you also subtract from it the 314000 and so on um, of the revised total payment, and that should leave you with $41,570.21. In the exam, a number about $40, up to $40 either side of that figure will be considered as correct. In addition to that, if people work it out on an annual basis, so we use the data here in the calculator, you end up doing exactly the same mathematics and you end up with slightly different values. And in this case, the savings is 41,219. And in the exam, that would earn you one mark rather than two. But the monthly result will give you full marks.